Greetings and welcome to Fresh Fire International Ministries, your Wisdom Wednesday Nugget. This week's title, we're continuing from uh, where we left off last week. The title is Lord is Your Armor Working? Lord is Your Armor, is Your Armor of God Working? I'm Pastor Janice for Reed Hardy. Now, we discussed last time that Paul spent five chapters. We call them chapters. They didn't call them chapters when they were writing these letters, okay? But we said that it took Paul five chapters to help the Ephesians to get a very clear, you know, understanding about their self-identity. We left saying, know yourself, know your self-identity, know that God specifically chose you for whatever you face, and know that God will bring you through, okay? And know what Elijah's servant learned, that they are more with you than are against you. It's an unfair fight. You win because with, because you're with God. Now, as we press on into Ephesians 6, uh, chapter 6, verses 10 through 20, Paul gets specific about the armor. According to Ephesians 6, 14, God gives you a belt of truth that you symbolically but powerfully wear around your midsection or your waist. So it holds up the top and the bottom part of you, of who you are. It's as though, just like tightrope walkers, there is a hook that is holding you by your waist from crashing, holding you from crashing. And that belt or hook is called God's truth. And God's truth cannot die or be defeated. God's truth holds your very being from falling into territory where you have no business being. Even if you do not know the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation, there is an inner alarm that goes off inside you when you are moving into dangerous territory where God does not want you to be, okay? There is a tugging. There's a tugging of that belt. There is a tugging of that hook. You know, just like a tightrope walker that warns you that you are going too far in the wrong direction, even if over there looks attractive. Of course it looks attractive. How else could the devil, you know, entice you? The enemy of your soul, the devil, will never stop trying to get you to cut that tightrope because the devil cannot cut it. Only you can cut it, all right, okay? The enemy of your soul will never stop trying to get you to just somehow depart from that tightrope or from that um, that belt, okay, and enter a foreign territory, just as the enemy tried to tempt Jesus, all right? And there's also the breastplate, the breastplate that's covering this part of your body, the upper part of your body, The breastplate of righteousness is another part of the armor that Paul tells us about. Now, righteousness is the very character of God. And God has given you and given me the opportunity to have his character, which he guards carefully and takes very seriously. That is why, one reason why, it is so important that if you or if I somehow miss the mark, that if we do something that does not exhibit God's character, it is crucial that we quickly confess it to God to God, and that we repent so that we do not leave the most vulnerable, a very vulnerable part of our armor open to infiltration, that we do not leave our very lives open to invasion. When that breast plate is not used properly, or when it's put down, that means this whole part of us, this whole vital part of our being is in danger, okay? And that part, okay, that part, it covers our heart and it even covers our lungs. Now, even, even when you think about it, okay, in in the physical world, if our heart malfunctions, it will affect every other part of our body. And if our heart stops beating, every other part, part of our body has only a few minutes to keep <laughs> keep surviving before it too dies or before it becomes irreparably most likely irreparably damaged okay all right so that breastplate that 
heart, that vital heart is so important. God gives us, you know, the that armor, that breastplate of righteousness to protect what is necessary for every other part of our being to survive and thrive. And that is his righteousness, not your righteousness, not mine, but his infallible righteousness. And then Paul goes on, okay? He goes on in Ephesians and he begins to talk about our feet or you know, some say the shoes that cover our feet. Many Bible experts believe that the whole image that Paul gives us in, you know, in these, in these verses is something that the Ephesians would have seen in their everyday life. That is the armor worn by the Roman soldiers who were present in their land. Those Roman soldiers wore sandals that had a sole, S-O-L-E, or a bottom, okay, that had short nails in them. They had short nails protruding out of them, okay? And those nails gave those Roman soldiers, it gave their shoes traction that allowed those soldiers to steadfastly and faithfully and staunchly fight in close hand-to-hand -hand battle or combat. And those short nails also enabled those Roman soldiers to climb high on rough and unsteady terrain or land without slipping back, okay? It gave them traction. And also those nails gave them the ability to run, especially toward an enemy without slipping and falling. Therefore, the armor of God, Paul says, includes your feet feet or shoes specially fitted, specially designed with the gospel of the good news or the peace. The nails that are protruding from our symbolic or spiritual feet that's helping us to do all the things that the Roman soldiers could do with their shoes, that is not nails, but it is the gospel or the good news of peace. Wherever you walk or go, you are steady on your path and automatically carrying without dropping the wholeness of the gospel of the abundant life of real life. Your so-called Roman soldier nails of the gospel is your symbolic, okay? In your symbolic feet or symbolic shoes, it helps you to stand steady against everything in every situation that would dare charge at you trying to knock you down or take you out or even prevent you from going higher in Jesus Christ. Those Roman soldier nails, the gospel of Jesus Christ, okay, it helps you to be firm in whatever comes at you or where, whatever you have to go and remove. God has equipped you to protect yourself in advance, even as God stands with you. I do not think, as we're talking, you know, as I'm talking about this armor of, you know, God, that God gives you the armor and then says, hey, I wish you the best. Okay, I'm leaving town. No, 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 no. God still stands proudly next to you every time you put on the armor, every time you use the armor. And probably every time you even think about the armor, okay? God doesn't just give it and leave you. No, God stands with you. Every time you enter the boardroom or the corner store, God is already giving you what you need to successfully travel through according to God's plan and God's permission. It's important. I'm hesitating for a moment. I hope that will sink in. Believe it, you are already, you are already equipped, just like those Roman, in fact, more so than those Roman soldiers were equipped for whatever might be coming at them. Now, as we're talking about this armor, I'm not going deep into any, any of the pieces of the armor. Okay, these are just, you know, my words, you know, they're simply an overview to remind you that you are always equipped as you follow Jesus Christ. And then Paul goes on, okay, in Ephesians 6, 16. And let me read that. Above, above, above all, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. 
Paul immediately tells them what this piece of armor is for, because you will, I will, we will see fiery darts coming at us from time to time. And the purpose of those fiery darts, okay, darts that are on fire heading towards us, the purpose of them is to terrorize us and to kill us or allow us to kill ourselves even before the dark gets to us. The fear, the worry, the panic, the tossing and turning all night unable to sleep, the what ifs, the oh my God, this diagnosis, this thing, the oh my God, this is bigger than I thought, okay. Paul said, you have the belt of truth. You have the breastplate of righteousness. You have your feet, okay, or your shoes that are already prepared or fitted, you know, with the gospel. But when it comes to faith, Paul changes up on his words. Paul says, you must step out. You must step up and you must grab it, grab it by force. It's not automatic. You must make the decision to take your faith by force. And yes, 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 that is not always easy when you're in one of the battles of your life. But God makes it possible. So whose report are you going to believe? Paul says, get up, take your faith, and it will immobilize all the fiery darts of the enemy. He didn't say some of the darts. He said all the darts of the enemy, all those darts that are bent on your destruction. And Paul introduced this part of the armor by saying, above all, in the King James Version, above all, meaning this is critical. When you get a bad report for you or someone you care about, that is a fiery dart. When you see someone you care about determined to go in the wrong direction and you know what the outcome will likely be, that is a fiery dart. When you look at your finances and there is no mathematical way this could turn out well based on what you need, whether it's a need in your personal life, a need in your church, a need in your ministry, a need in your business, a need in whatever, that is a fiery dart. These things are coming at you and they are on fire and they are speeding toward you. Okay. All right. Okay. When you face a decision that must be made now, because this fiery dart is coming at you. Okay. When you face a decision that must be made now and God appears to have gone silent on you, that is a fiery dart. When you confront any situation where you do not yet see an exit sign and the lions and the wolves are moving in, that is a fiery dart. God says, you can't hope for the fast background music to start playing and that there's going to be some secret agent dropping out of the sky coming to save you. That's not going to happen because this is not a spy movie. This is life in real time. You will see fiery darts from time to time. So grab your faith. It's always just there for you to grab. It's always there. Grab your faith like you mean it. Grab it like you mean it and don't let go no matter what. So how long? How long? <laughs> how long will it take? It's going to take as long as it takes, okay? Go read Hebrews chapter 11, and it will tell you how long. Then Paul moves right along, and he tells the, you know, he tells the Ephesian church, and he tells us, to t once again, using that word, take, okay? There's that action word again, take. Once again, that's meaning that you control this. You have the power to make this arm, this piece of armor work. God said through Paul, take the helmet. Okay, the helmet. The helmet was covering your whole, covering the whole head. Okay, it covers the whole head. Some said, it, you know, for some Roman soldiers, it would come almost to the eye, and some of them even had a little piece of the armor on their nose. But it's covering your whole head. Okay, take the helmet of sal, you know, the helmet, and point it. Okay, point it towards that thing that is coming towards you. What is what's in that helmet? Okay, what's up here? Okay. That's protecting your head. It's protecting your mind. It's protecting your sanity. It's, pro you know, take authority over your thoughts and your world views. Protect what you 
are allowing into your helmet space, okay? By putting it all under the authority of salvation, the helmet of salvation. It means that you take whatever is coming at you and you put it under the microscope of, you know, microscope of, of salvation, the microscope of what Jesus did for you. Does it fit within that salvation? Does it fit within what Jesus did for you? If it doesn't, discard it. Get rid of it quickly, okay? If there are things, there are incoming things that are coming at your helmet space, at this area, you know, of your existence, okay? All right? If it does not match up with your salvation, get rid of it, block it however you can, and do it fast, all right? And if there are things that are already in your helmet space, perhaps even before you were saved, perhaps who knows what, you know, childhood, whatever, if there are things in your head already, in your helmet space already, that do not match up with the salvation that Jesus gave you, okay, all right, then then it is time for you to use the armor of God on yourself, okay? Use it on yourself, okay? And evict those things and, you know, evict them. Get rid of those intruders that are in your helmet, okay? your helmet space or your head space. However you got to do it, do it, okay? Because you have authority over it, okay? Once again, Paul said, take it. This is in your control all right okay and he says and finally take once again that word take in your it's in your power okay you control this take the sword the sword is a defensive weapon take the sword of the spirit of god which is the word of god now this word that's used here it doesn't mean just any word this word really means, when it's translated from the language, you know, that the New Testament was written in, it means take a rhema word, take your rhema word, not just a general word, but a rhema word. And there's great debate about what a rhema word is, okay? There are all kind of debates, but a basic belief is, is that a rhema word somehow involves a word of God that is specific to your, okay, to your life or to your situation, okay? And the more, the more, the, the way that uh, Paul put those words together, okay, it's telling us that the more that you lean into the spirit of God, the spirit of God, which is the word, which is, you know, the rhema word of God, the more that you lean into the spirit of God, the more you will hear God's specific guidance or rhema word for your life, okay? For your path, for your direction. One of the many ways, many ways that you can lean in more into the Spirit of God is by honoring and obeying the one who sent the Holy Spirit to you in the first place. And that means, okay, honoring and obeying Jesus Christ. So, and once again, as I said, this is just an overview. We're not even going deep into it. So master the battlefield of your mind, protect your mind, okay? And constantly take, 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 or lean into the sword of the spirit, okay? Lean into the spirit so that the spirit can give you rhema words from God, personalized direction. And then finally, Paul winds up his general comments on the armor of God, telling the Ephesians and us, to never stop your prayers. Let me read for you Ephesians 6, 17. Paul says, praying always, okay, with all prayer and supplication, okay, for all the saints and for me, for him, for Paul, that utterance may be given to him, uh, that he, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, Okay for which I am an ambassador in chains, that in it I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Prayer, although not considered, you know, by most people to be a part of the armor of God, yet prayer is, is like the icing on the cake. It is the breath that we breathe in, the breath that we breathe out. So Paul tells us all to pray for all believers, not just the ones you like, pray for 
all believers and to pray for him or to pray for our Christian leaders so they can keep spreading the gospel and building up the saints. It all comes out of prayer. And he ends, you know, uh, chapter six, he ends this section, I should say, as we began <laughs> with, with this discussion. He ends saying, I know who I am and this is how I see myself. My self-identity, Paul says, is intact. I am an ambassador for Christ, even in chains. That's who I am. I am an ambassador for Christ. That's how I define myself. That's how I self-identify. And that's what my actions flow from and flow to. So in conclusion, just keep building up your self-identity in Christ. It's important. And keep using and believing in your armor of and from God. Use the armor of God. God has already given it to you. So now just go, go and be powerful. Thank you for joining us this week. We pray that this will bless you. Share it with someone, you know, all right? And we hope that you will join us on September, Saturday, September 23rd at our a conference that's in, that um, has a theme of everything is changed, but God, but God. And to register, well, to learn more about us, you can, or even communicate with us, you can visit our website at www.ffiministries.com, www.ffiministries.com. God bless you.